while you're in the military, you often hear how hard it's going to be on the outside. You're not going to be able to find a job, or if you find a job, it's not going to be that good, especially if you're in the combat occupation, your artillery, your infantry, your Cav Scout, all those folks. How exactly is your experience going to transfer to a high-paying, meaningful job? I'm going to show you exactly how it transfers. First, let's take the infantry. These guys are usually running around outside with a weapon all day, or they're doing maintenance. So how do you take experience like that and transfer it on a resume to show that you're qualified for a decent job? Okay, picture this. You take a knee, you have your notepad out, you're writing down an operation order. Your platoon leader, your squad leader is giving you an op order. You get to paragraph four, service and support. You realize you guys don't have enough ammunition. You don't have enough MREs. The special equipment isn't here. You identified a gap in the order. You have analyzed that information and now you're gonna articulate it. You're gonna communicate it. That is a skill. That is a skill that many soldiers have, especially in the infantry. Another one, you're doing an AAR, an after action review or a hot wash. You are listing improvements and sustains from your last mission. Those improvements you're advising. You're advising leadership, advising management on how to rectify an issue within that order. How to improve the effectiveness or efficiency of that operation. That is also a skill. Both of those actions, both of those skills, the analyzing and the advising, that would line you up for a government job in the 0343 job series. Take this one for example, management and program analyst at the GS11 to GS13 grade level with a salary between $78,000 and $145,000 a year. For this job, you need one year of experience in assisting developing operational process and identifying, analyzing, and making recommendations to resolve issues in workflow. You don't need any special college degree for this job. And it's not just a 0343. You can find the same type of opportunities if you look at the 0301 or the 0303. The opportunities, they're there. What it depends upon is how well is your resume written? Does it articulate the actual skills and experience that you have attained when you were a soldier? Now let's look at a vehicle mechanic. It doesn't matter if this is for a tank or if it's for a helicopter or for whatever military vehicle. You're looking through the SOP, you're looking through the technical manual and you're following a procedure to ensure that you're doing maintenance correctly. And with maintenance, you identify you need parts. That means you have to order parts. Your motor sergeant could be ordering the parts or you could be assisting him or you could be doing it yourself. That ordering parts, that inputting data in order to retrieve parts, that is also a skill. The same thing could be had when you get the parts. You have multiple vehicles maybe you're responsible for. There's multiple parts. That is inventory. You have to manage that inventory. It might not be thought of that way when you're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis, but that is what it is. That is what needs to be communicated in your resume. This type of experience of managing inventory and maintenance, you can find a job in the 0346 job series. Take this one for example, logistics management specialist. This is at the GS7 to GS9 grade with a salary between $46,000 and $84,000 a year. For this job, you would need one year of experience in coordinating logistic functions such as transportation, maintenance, and warehousing. Now, this is a GS job. The 0346 is a GS job. There are other opportunities, many of them, in the WG pay band. Now, the difference between GS and WG is typically GS gets paid a little bit more on average, depending on where you're at. And every year, there's usually a pay increase on, Janu on the first pay period of January. The WG, they, they have a pay increase at a different time and they use a different way of doing it. So what I would tell you is when you're exploring GS and WG, look at the pay. The benefits are largely the same, but if there's higher pay in one area, pursue that area. Next, let's look at a company XO, executive officer. This is typically a first lieutenant who's been in the military two or three years. They've already done their platoon leader time. Now they're second in command to the company commander, which is usually a captain. This person does a lot of functions. A lot of it, they have their hand in maintenance, but they also have their hand in some of the company's budget. When it comes for the company spending money on their supply closet, when it comes to the company requesting money for training purposes, 
they deal with a certain degree of finances. They're reviewing the numbers, they're making requests, and because they're doing this type of stuff, they could be eligible for the 0560 job series, which is a budget analyst. Take this one, for example, budget analyst at the Department of Energy. This is at the GS9 to GS15 grade with a salary between $59,000 and $191,000 a year. For this job, you need one year of experience in reviewing financial data, budget reports, and formulating justifications for requesting funds. There are over 100 government jobs in the 0560 job series. Some of them require a lot of experience. Some of them don't require very much experience at all. And interestingly enough, what you will find in some 0560 positions, they transfer nicely to the 0343 and vice versa. Some agencies actually code their budget analysts as 0343. So there's a lot of room to move back and forth in that type of job series. Next, let's look at a combat medic. A medic is usually doing one or two things. One, they're providing medical support. Two, they're training. They're either receiving training or they're giving training or they're training other units, other people on medical techniques and procedures. So with the training aspect, that puts them in line to be a training specialist. That is in the 1700 job series. Take this one for example, training specialist with the Veteran Affairs. This is at the GS 11 grade with a salary between $69,000 and $89,000 a year. This job requires one year of experience in teaching or instructing, and it specifically says military installation. You need to be able to administer training programs, review training and course material, aids, devices, evaluate training results. This type of job series, it's not exclusive to medics. This could be an NCO or commission officer. There are a lot of leaders in the military that have experience teaching and training soldiers. It could have been on a PowerPoint presentation or a butcher block board where you're simply writing, you're drawing, and you're informing and instructing soldiers in order to learn valuable skills that they can apply in their job. Leaders are doing this every day in the military. You could take that experience and you can pivot and pursue a job like a training specialist. There are hundreds of federal government jobs that can match many people's experience that they gained in the military. Now, one of the problems I find with the military community, a lot of the leaders, they're so consumed with chasing degrees. You will see senior enlisted and senior officers with two or three master's degrees, degrees in organizational leadership, master's degrees in leadership, military tactics. These degrees, they're not really getting you any type of special job in the government. What matters more than that is your experience. And when it comes to writing your resume, this is what you should do. You should pull all your evaluations. If you're an NCO, your NCOERs. If you're an officer, your OERs. Pull those years of evaluations. Take, those, take that information that's on there. You can use that because typically those are your biggest achievements of the year. Second thing, look at your awards. Your PCS awards or whatever awards that you received maybe while you were deployed, Look through there. Those are usually written in a format that showcase your achievements while you were wearing the uniform, while you were stationed at that duty station or while you were deployed. That's what you should be doing. What you shouldn't be doing is filling your resume up with acronyms or talking about systems that nobody in the civilian world has any idea. Do not talk about a Bradley or an M1 Abrams tank in their optic system or their thermal vision that's going to, people are going to be probably not only confused, but maybe even a little afraid of that type of experience. You're talking about war fighters on your resume. Don't, don't use the word war fighters. I know they use it in the military sometimes. That doesn't mean that you should use it. Get rid of the acronyms, get rid of the military speak. There are some federal agencies that veterans are gravitating towards. This is usually the Department of Defense, the Department of Homeland Security, and Veteran Affairs. Those three, they happen to be very large federal agencies also. They have a high percentage of veterans that go in there. And part of the reason is a lot of people when they leave the military, they have a hard time leaving the military culture. They still want to be part of the military in some capacity, so they go there. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine. You can also look at it as, you know, you're, you're staying connected to the community and you're serving people, which is great. As for myself, 
I didn't want anything to do with the military because I had already been in the military for over 20 years. If you don't already know, there are a lot of military veteran preferences when you're coming into the federal government. You not only have VRA, which is the Veteran Recruitment Authority, you have VEOA, which is if you served in the military and you're watching this right now, chances are like 99% chance that you qualify for VEOA, then there's 30% disability. So there is so much choice when it comes to leveraging preference to getting a government job. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be easy, but it does give you an edge over the general public that are applying for government jobs. If you are trying to get a federal government job, it's important that you understand the hiring process. It can be very confusing at times, and there are many sequential events that occur that you should be prepared for. If you're interested in learning about the federal government process, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.